Hi there, I'm Diary the Benings. I'm the guy behind Noah Deviation. We're all about finding good solutions for your pharmaceutical project. We're looking at projects that want to be more efficient, and we try to find those solutions that will allow you to bring efficiency and effectiveness on the execution of the project. I love getting my hands on new tools, right, uh, that can shake things up. And after some serious testing, I'd like to share them with you all. So today I've got something exciting. Meet Ila. I had the chance to hang out with their CEO, Dan, thanks to Enterprise Island Network. He does doing some cool stuff um, that I'd like to share with you. So stick around because we have the opportunity to have Dan with us to bond some questions and answers together. And this will be a fun light chat, uh, but it could be a game changer to run your project. So Dan, our audience would love to hear directly from the man behind the helm. Um, tell us about yourself and what drove you to lead this exciting venture that is either. Uh, thanks, Pierre. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I, I started in the industry as a mechanical engineer. I worked for Mercury Engineering, who were our Ireland's largest electric contractor. That nine great years with them, working mainly on pharmaceuticals and semiconductor projects. The data centers didn't actually exist then. So my role as an engineer was, was pretty varied with one major area to look after was the documentation required when building a pharmaceutical plant, things like test packs and well logs, all the test sheets. So I left Mercury in 2008 and had an idea to build a software basically to do the job that I used to do. So I teamed up with Rami Michael, he's our CTO, but also happened to be my best friend from school. So, um, and also a brilliant software developer. So it kind of, it fit perfect. So we got to work on IDA in September, 2009, and we rolled it out on a power generation project with Mercury in January, January 2011. And they were the first taken on board. If, if they weren't, we were in trouble. So we were selling the software to contractors in Ireland uh, and then a little bit throughout Europe when the general contractors took note. So they saw multiple trades using IDA on their projects and they asked us if we could modify the software so that they could adopt it and force their contractors to log into their own version. So soon after that, we got on board with the likes of Biomarin to manage their ongoing works in their production facility in Cork in Ireland. And then we got Regeneron and slowly and steadily, it's been you know pharma clients or main contractors after each other. Uh, it's been like a 50-50 split, I'd say now, between the contract, the main contractors and the end pharmaceutical clients taking IDA, using on large capital projects, but some of them also use it for smaller ongoing works, you know, putting manners on the trades. So it's become really a project management and turnover tool for the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's what makes those kind of tools really great is that they've been developed by people like you that try to solve a problem that they had in the past, right? And I can say that the, the journey of it has been impressive so far. And I heard you are securing like some system cell project work. Like you say, you, you're doing like small contractor deployment, but you're also working on much bigger projects. So to give people an idea, what would be, you know, for either the biggest project, total cost of investment, don't need to name the client, but, you know, What's uh, your biggest achievement in terms of project support you have today? Uh, well, the largest projects we'd, we'd always be involved in would be the semiconductor projects. But from the pharmaceutical side of things, we have some really large ones uh, in Denmark and the U.S. The one in U.S. in North Carolina is a, I think it's sort of like a $1.6 billion investment from the client. It's a campus. It's absolutely ginormous now. We're also on a very large uh, project uh, with Lily and Cork in, sorry, Limerick um, at the moment. We've digitized many of their before used paper-based forms. We've done a lot of development for them. Well, history, we've gone through a lot of pain with that, but it's a great outcome, actually. We've also got the likes of Wuxi in Ireland. Uh, that's ongoing. It's been very, very large. Um, some projects with MSD uh, throughout Ireland and Merck in the US as well. And then in Singapore, we've been live on the Pfizer API expansion project for, I think, about two years now. And we just kicked off with their DS2 project in Ireland. Okay, that's great. I have to say it's quite an achievement. Um, I personally, first time I had to, the opportunity to view it, I was one, on, on one of those projects where we are more like in the auditing part of the project execution and stage gate review. And I found it very useful to understand 
uh, what was done, what still need to be done, where you know where was the pain point of the project, and have all that um, value and and very quickly being able to understand uh, the project status, right? So really, aside of the, the the saving on the digitalization of things, I, I think that from a project reporting and project control perspective, EDA was very useful. So could you explain the primary motivation for a company to consider a solution like EDA? What, what would be the driver that you see more, more often? Yeah, well, we, we cover so many areas in the software, like doc control. So that's very appealing to the, the trade contractors and general contractors starting off really at the lowest in the food chain, so to speak. But by developing the software for the trades and catering for welders, well log, uh, test packs, it's enabled us to enhance that for the end clients. What I mean by that is if you if you have all the trades doing what they're supposed to do on a single platform to the client standards and with all the rules and uh, that we have in the software, then the quality of work's going to be high. And you know, the clients still see that. And we, and we combine all that data and the forms that they produce and basically package it up by system for the client. So there's no more getting different documentation from different trades and vendors. It's all the same. Uh, it just has a different data on it and it's up to a very high quality, which adds to this, you know, it helps aid the C&Q process greatly. Um, they've got access to that team. They've got access now to like completed documentation a long time before they normally would. They can go into well logs, material certs well before turnover is even complete or even started. And um, they're able to view things like, you know, make model serial number. Uh, of equipment because this comes from the trades during receipt verification of all that free issue or or uh, equipment they buy, and uh, it's just one of the processes that the software manages. And like, when we demo the software to a potential client, pharma client, we show them all these processes, and they'll quickly understand what IDA is about and and its benefits to their projects. And it's primarily based around system turnover, really. You know that that that's our niche. It's you know handing over system. Uh, which obviously it's absolutely vital uh, to the pharmaceutical projects we're on. Yeah, I, I saw, I saw, you know, one of the project, multi-million dollar project here, where you only have like two, three physical cabinet handover. Well, before you will have spent like months to try to control the fold, folder and binder you were handing over. So I think that, like you said, the, the digitalization will definitely bring a lot of saving and uh, value added task in the sense that we can focus on something else than counting binder. I agree with you that when you bring a tool which is easy to use, um, it can bring a lot of harmonization. And then when you bring those systems in place, it's easier to improve all the system and, and um, you know, get your data in a consistent way. So from a, I would say from a user perspective, right? The, the guy you need to key in the data in because mm -hmm. in EDA, what's your recipe to onboard the user? How do you convince people, not the manager, not the stakeholder, but the guy that need to use EDA, how do you make his life easier? Well, at the beginning, a lot of trial and error, but uh, it is a challenge and it has always been a challenge and it always will, but you know, seeing it is really believing and it's it's a lot easier when you have users from previous projects who know how to use the software and recognize the benefits. And um, especially during the turnover phase of the project, they see the real benefits then. But for training and onboarding, we've had to consistently introduce new new ideas and delivery methods. Uh, Lisa Maloney, who's our training integration manager, and she was actually a former user of the software in, in a previous job as a contractor. Uh, she's always out searching for these new softwares that can help that, making the onboarding experience smoother for users. And the latest one that we've implemented guides the users on screen. Uh, and it's much more visually appealing than the previous versions that we've had where, you know, you'd have to log out of our software or just have it side by side. But this is actually on screen and it's really, really good. Um, and of course, for all our projects, we have to provide staggered training um, as the project moves into new phases from design, construction and turnover. We have to cater for all the trades. So we'd really be providing constant training throughout the life cycle of the, of the project for pretty much everybody on it. It's that's totally required. OK, I think uh, as we as we move with those digital solutions, we we'll, would we'll see also a skill building up and we see that. Uh, and I think, the, like you say, the, the the 
the positive experience of having, you know, things review faster and, and things hand over faster is also a driver for people willing to use the tools, right? Um, so thank, thank you for sharing all that. Um, last question, can we expect to see you next week at the ISB conference in Singapore? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Really looking forward to attending. Um, well, it's a fast, fantastic event full of exhibitors and speakers and networking opportunities. So um, we'll join yourselves on booth 204, I think, uh, mm -hmm. where we can have a chat, bring you through a demo. I'll try not to bore you too much. And we can set up some follow on calls with project teams and uh, and take it from there. Perfect. So first, that's about it for today. I just want, if you want to know more and if you want to discuss, you can either, you know, follow up, give us a like, put a comment. You can reach out to me, to know Deviation, to Ida, to Dan. Again, Dan will be in Singapore next week at the conference. Um, I, I spent a, quite a bit of time with him and his enthusiasm is like uh, communicative. So if you want to chat with him, come at the conference, meet him in person, maybe make a first contact, learn a little bit about what is in there, because we truly believe that, you know, we are a user of those kind of software. We're not going to develop it in no deviation, but we really see the benefit for delivering project faster and improving the quality of what is delivered because the efficiency of the tools allow you to focus on what really matters in your quality. So thank you so much for tuning to this episode. Um, your support and curiosity drive us to find, you know, the coolest solution on the market and share them <coughs> with you. So until next time, keep, keep innovating and stay curious. Thanks, you guys. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thanks, Pierre. Take care. Bye-bye.